In fission, large nuclei, like uranium, split into smaller nuclei. So here we have a large nucleus, and in fission it will split into two somewhat smaller nuclei, but still nuclei of significant size, because uranium is a very, very massive nucleus. And what is released in that process is energy. Fission is often started by an initiator, like I've drawn here on the left side of the screen. I'm circling it with my laser pointer. And that initiator is a neutron. In particular, a slow-moving neutron is better. And fission often produces some free neutrons. And I'm going to draw these on the right side of the screen. There they go. I drew three of them. And what do you suppose those free neutrons can do to other uranium atoms nearby? And that would be start a chain reaction. So if each of those then produces three neutrons, you can see how quickly this thing could escalate and be potentially dangerous. So here are two examples of fission. Uh, the first atomic weapons were fission weapons, and we today generate uh, electricity from nuclear power plants through this process of fission. There is a very significant problem with fission, and that is that there is radioactive waste that is generated. And the reactants, like uranium, are themselves radioactive. So while we can do useful things with fission, we do need to be careful. Whereas in fission, we are breaking large nuclei into smaller ones, in fusion, we are taking small nuclei, like hydrogen, and fusing them together to form a larger nucleus, like helium. Four hydrogen atoms, for example, can be fused to form helium. And in the process, we release energy. Now this is not an easy thing to do, because the nuclei of hydrogen atoms, think about it, each nucleus of a hydrogen atom is basically just a proton. And protons, if you push them close to each other, they don't really want to go because they're all positively charged and so they tend to push each other away. So fusion works really well on places that are really, really hot so that those particles are moving very, very fast, so fast that they're able to get close enough to each other to cause this reaction to happen before the electrostatic repulsion kicks in and pushes them apart from each other. We have uh, done fusion on Earth with the hydrogen bomb. The problem is we aren't able to control fusion the hydrogen bomb, hopefully you can appreciate, is an uncontrolled fusion reaction. We just set it off and off it goes. But if we want to generate electricity from fusion, we must be able to control it, to regulate it, to make it constant and steady, rather than just, as in the hydrogen bomb, a big woof, and that's it. So, you might guess, great minds like yours maybe, are working on this. The good news about fusion is that there's plenty of fuel because on this planet there's lots and lots of hydrogen. So that's very good news. Also there's no radioactive waste produced in a fusion reaction. The problem with fusion is trying to contain and control the reaction because you need to heat the reactants up to millions of degrees, there's no physical vessel on this planet that will be able to contain that. So we're using magnetic fields to try to contain the reaction. We haven't perfected it yet, but please feel free to do that in your spare time. Let's summarize. Fission occurs when a large nucleus splits into smaller nuclei. Fission is not the same as alpha decay. 
in alpha decay, a relatively tiny piece of a very large nucleus is spit out of the atom. In fission, a large nucleus cracks into two different nuclei, each of which is quite significant in size. Fission is the process that powers nuclear reactors that generate electricity. Fusion is the joining, or fusing, of smaller nuclei into larger ones. Fusion is the process that powers our sun and all stars. Both fission and fusion release energy, i.e., they are both exothermic.